Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a really important stock in the stock market right now that recently announced earnings for the first quarter of 2023. And that stock is Alphabet Class C, or otherwise known as the parent company of Google. And we can see that over the last year, Alphabet is up around 2 to 3 percent in the same time period that the S&P 500 is up around 3 to 4 percent. So they're slightly underperforming the market, but pretty much just keeping par with the rest of the market here. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the recent news that came out surrounding Alphabet that might not be very beneficial to Google. And then I'm also going to look into their financial statements and use a discounted cash flow model to figure out the intrinsic value per share for Google. So we can know if this is currently a good share price to buy into the stock from a value investing perspective. And so right here in this article, they point out that Alphabet recently went through a downturn in the market where they lost around $50 billion of market cap in one trading day. And some key points they point out before we get into the article is that New York Times recently reported that Samsung might stop using Google as the default search engine in their phones. They're thinking about potentially replacing Google with Microsoft's Bing search engine because of the fact that Microsoft recently started making heavy investments into ChatGPT and they're trying to integrate ChatGPT into their Bing search engine, which might make Bing in the future a superior search engine to Google, which is obviously infringing on Google's massive market share of the search engine market. And so investors are obviously feeling a little bit panicky about this. And so right here, they point out Microsoft might be a bigger threat to Google than you realize. They lost $50 billion of market cap when the publication from the New York Times story made its way on the Internet. And there are some people who are very concerned over the fact that Samsung is considering dumping Google and replacing uh, Microsoft's chat GPT powered Bing as their default search engine on their new smartphones. And so the reason why this is relevant is because $3 billion of annual revenue comes from Alphabet's contracts with Samsung. And so if this were to be replaced, then obviously that might end up decreasing Google's revenues. But on top of that, one of the bigger issues is that Samsung is not the only company potentially considering replacing Google as their default search engine, but Apple might be considering doing that as well. And about $20 billion of annual revenue comes from Alphabet's contracts with Apple to make them the default search engine on their smartphones. Apple obviously has a history of breaking up with key suppliers in order to go their own way. So this is one risk that investors can't really ignore. And right here they point out that at the moment, Google has 80% market share and that is coming under attack from Microsoft. But even though $3 billion and $20 billion is a lot of money from Samsung and Apple's contracts with Google, Google's search engine business is a lot larger than that at an estimated $162 billion per year. And just because a smartphone maker doesn't make Google their default search engine, it doesn't prevent a user from installing Google independently and using Google as their main search engine anyway. So a lot of the risk here is both hypothetical and potentially might not be as big as people are making it out to be. The bigger risk that this article points out is that Google basically ceded the initiative to Microsoft for them to come in and be the leaders in the artificial intelligence race. And obviously Bing is a much smaller search engine than Google. So because of that, they're able to use that to their advantage and invest heavily into changing their product outright because they don't really have that much to lose. Whereas with Google being the search engine that takes up 80% market share, they obviously can't take big risks like that because as this article points out, if they change their business model too much, considering it served them so long, they might accidentally break something and they might make a mistake that they can't really take back. So that could definitely be one of the bigger risks facing Alphabet at the moment in their artificial intelligence race with Microsoft's Bing search engine. And so right here, we can see their balance sheet for their financial statements comparing December 31st, 2022 to March 31st, 2023. We can see total assets are up from $365 billion to $369 billion. Most of their business is financed by equity compared to liabilities. 
They had $108 billion of liabilities in their most recent quarter and $260 billion of total equity. Retained earnings increased from $195 billion up $1 billion to $196 billion. Then right here, we can see their income statement. Revenues increased from $68 billion to $69.7 billion. So that's a small increase of around 3%. But that being said, their net income decreased during the same time period year over year from $16.4 billion to around $15 billion of net income. And lastly, right here, we can see Alphabet's cash flow statement. We can see that they're comparing the first quarter of 2022 to the first quarter of 2023. Operating cash flow decreased from $25 billion to $23.5 billion year over year. And then we can see they repurchased around $14.5 billion of common stock in the first quarter of 2023 compared to $13 billion in the first quarter of 2022. So they're still prioritizing returning value back to shareholders by repurchasing common stock. So that's definitely a good sign to see for people who are currently holding on to shares of Alphabet. And so right here, we can see this discounted cash flow model to figure out the intrinsic value per share for Google. Google is one of the few big tech companies that is actually trading below their intrinsic value per share. So that is pretty rare to find. As we can see right here, according to Yahoo Finance, their growth rate is projected to be around 17% for the next five years. They had around $60 billion of free cash flow in 2022, $85 billion of cash on their balance sheet and around 6 billion shares outstanding. That puts their intrinsic value per share at $236 per share, which means that at the moment, trading at $117 per share. They are trading below intrinsic value per share here. They're actually trading at around a 50% margin of safety as we can see right here, which means they are trading at a pretty good buying opportunity according to these estimates from Yahoo Finance. Then right here on the right-hand side here, I did a competitor analysis comparing them to some of the other big tech companies in their industry. We can see that in terms of profit margins, Google has about a middle of the pack gross profit margin at 55%, higher than Apple and Amazon, but lower than Microsoft and Meta. They also have a middle of the pack net profit margin at 21%, which is higher than Meta and Amazon, but lower than Apple and Microsoft. Then they also have a middle of the pack return on assets, higher than Amazon and Meta, lower than Apple and Microsoft. They have the lowest price to earnings ratio, so they might be trading at the cheapest price compared to their other competitors, and they don't pay a dividend. Microsoft pays the highest dividend at around $2.48 per share. So in comparison to the other companies in their industry, the big tech companies, we can see that Google from a profit ratio perspective alone looks to be pretty competitive, but they're basically middle of the pack compared to, Am to Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, and Meta. And then lastly, to end off the video, I wanted to compare them to some of the other companies we've looked at. We can see that I've been talking about the fact that Google is one of the few companies we've looked at that's actually trading below their intrinsic value per share over the last few videos. We can see ExxonMobil, GE, ConocoPhillips, and Google are the only companies we've looked at so far that are trading below their intrinsic value. And Google is trading at a 50% margin of safety at the moment, with their share price being about 50% of their estimated intrinsic value per share. In terms of growth rate, Google had an estimated 17.61% growth rate for the next five years. And so that puts them in the seventh place spot compared to the last 20 to 30 companies we've looked at here. In terms of profitability ratios, Google comes in eighth place across the board with a 55% gross profit margin and a 21% net profit margin. Adobe has the highest gross profit margin at 89% and Microsoft has the highest net profit margin we've seen at around 36%. And then lastly, we can see stock performance over the last five years. Google has around a 114% return over their five-year chart here, which does get them onto the board for the top 10 companies we've looked at over the last 20 to 30 companies. Tesla is number one with 781%. We can see Apple and Microsoft, two of the other big tech companies, have had a better return over the last five years but Google's is still pretty good at 114%. So based on this, we can see that they're pretty competitive compared to the other companies we've looked at on this channel. In terms of comparing them to the other big tech companies, they are also very competitive around the middle of the pack from a financial ratio perspective. And based on this discounted cash flow model, we aren't able to say it enough on this channel, 
but this company is actually trading below intrinsic value per share which is pretty rare as we see from a lot of the other companies we look at on this channel pretty much all of them are trading above their estimated intrinsic value per share based on some projected growth rates the discount rate of 10% that we're using along with some financial metrics on their financial statements but using Google's we can see that they are in fact trading at a good buying opportunity right now so I'm not too sure what to make of Alphabet I'm keeping my eye on this stock let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of Alphabet is it a good buy at the current share price and are you guys holding any shares of this stock let me know what you guys think leave a like on this video subscribe to the channel and I'll see everyone in the next one.